Hello everyone, John Lorden back here with another episode of Brain Scratch Searchlight. Uh, this is a, another recent case, I don't know if you remember, but a couple of episodes ago I told you that January seemed to have a spike in cases. Um, we are now looking at a, another missing person that occurred in January. This is over in my old stomping grounds, California, in the Southern California area. And this story has a couple of interesting aspects to it that we're going to touch on uh, as we go along. Uh, one of those being the relationship between the family and the uh, detectives in this case seems to have gone sour extremely rapidly, much, much faster than I typically see in these cases. As we're looking at this case right now, uh, I'm shooting this uh, just a little over a month of when it actually occurred and there are plenty of new stories going back for a few weeks already about the family questioning are the police really working on this case. Um, outside of that, there seems to be a very kind of unexplainable dropout in terms of media around this case. Um, I just wanted to put all that out to you before we jump in. Let's take a look at the case of Maricela Garcia. As we can see from this poster here, um, she disappeared while out shopping with her sister on January 12th, 2017 in Reseda, California. She is 26 years old, 5 feet 5 inches tall, and weighs 120 pounds. Um, it's not really going into the other vital information you typically see on a poster here, um, but you can see it's pretty obvious she has brown hair and brown eyes as well. If we jump over to dailynews.com, we see uh, some more photos of her as well as a little bit more detail. Um, she was last seen in Reseda wearing a white tank top with a white beanie, black jacket, and dark jeans. In another bit of an interesting twist on this case, I cannot find a NAMIS profile on her. Um, I have been reading up on this case also on web sleuths, and I did see a note there that someone has tried to create a profile. Uh, apparently it's just not being processed very quickly, uh, so supposedly there's one in the works, but as of right now, uh, no NAMIS profile set up for her. And if we do a quick news search on Google and sort it by date, you'll see that uh, the coverage pretty much stops at January 27th, 2017. That's only a little over two weeks after she went missing, um, but prior to that, there are tons and tons of articles uh, about this case. I'm not sure what prompted the stop in this news story. Um, I have seen that happen on occasion before, but it's usually when some type of kind of undesirable information comes out about the missing person. Um, I haven't really seen that in this case, so I, I don't know. Uh, it would occur to me that perhaps her family is not reaching out to media. Um, I have seen her sister quoted pretty often on a few different articles. I think her sister seems to be trying to help a bit but uh, I'm not sure. Her mother was also quoted in one article that we're going to get to here, um, but I'm just, I don't know, I'm kind of baffled at how the information just stops two weeks after this story, and we're now more than two weeks away from when the information stopped, and there is just no current updates. Um, you know, typically, if the family wants to keep awareness raised around this, um, they could be reaching out to media and starting to kick up those very hard questions about, hey, you know, we haven't uh, been talking to the investigators, they won't return our phone calls, I mean, things of that nature. We're not even seeing that in this case. So, very, very strange how everything just seems to have blacked out around this story. I was actually kind of half expecting to find an article saying that she had been found, but unfortunately that is not the case. If we jump over to abc7.com, we'll get a little more detail on what happened. Her sister, Sarah Garcia, said she was shopping at the Goodwill in Reseda with her older sister, 26-year-old Maricela Garcia, at about 7.30 on Thursday. That would be January 12th, 2017. Maricela Garcia told her sister she was stepping outside to have a cigarette, but she never returned to the store. What I've heard from other sources on this is she was shopping for um, parts of a costume. She was planning on attending an 80s party, and that's why they went to Goodwill to try to find some costume pieces for an 80s getup. Uh, we do actually have some video of her leaving the store. Let me bring that up for you guys real quick. Um, if you see here on YouTube, there are only a few videos about this case at all, uh, and two of them are her being in the Goodwill store. So let's just check out the exit video. There she is, 
walking out, walking off to the left, and that is all there is to it. Um, we do get a bit of a better sense of her clothing from this. Apparently it was raining that night. Yeah, very hard to get a solid capture, but there we can see she's definitely wearing jeans. Um, it seems like knee-high boots, very high boots, as well as that black coat and uh, the white hat. Back to the article at abc7.com. Maricela Garcia's car was still in the parking lot with her purse and cigarettes inside. Sarah Garcia said her sister has a cell phone, but it has been turned off. And police have a comment here as well. Quote, we haven't ruled out anything. It's odd that she walked away, but we're still investigating it. And what I'm saying is that there's no evidence of foul play that we've determined at this time. Lieutenant Kirk Kelly with the LAPD said. Sarah Garcia said her sister had a history of drug use, but had been clean for the past year after the two moved in together. According to an officer, Maricela Garcia has gone missing before. Obviously, two very big considerations here. Um, with a drug history, is she having a problem? Is she possibly relapsing? Did she leave the store to possibly meet up with someone? Um, I don't know. Those are the que just the kind of immediate questions that come out. Uh, outside of that, hearing that she has a history of disappearing before, obviously that's something that is always considered in these cases. When people have a history of disappearing, then it's kind of like the police take this position of, hey, well, they've done this before, and here they just go disappearing again. What's strange about this case, obviously, is that her purse is left in the vehicle. Um, her cigarettes are in her purse. And outside of that, it seems like her ID is missing, her car keys are missing, and her cell phone is missing. And we actually learn that she has two cell phones. And the story that's told to us, which I'm not quite sure I totally, uh, totally buy, uh, is that one of her cell phones is for her to talk and text with. And the other cell phone she basically uses as an internet device. Uh, I just have to be honest with you guys, the first consideration I think of someone having two separate cell phones and a possible drug past is, is she involved in something here? Might she be doing something illegal with that second cell phone? Um, why nowadays would you have a second cell phone just to use for internet use? Um, you know, I know that that used to be quite a bit more common, uh, maybe five, seven years ago. But uh, th at this current time, I don't know that it's really that common to have two separate devices like that anymore. Unless you have it purely for, you know, you act like it's a tablet, basically. But are you really going to carry that around with you? And we know that she did indeed carry that phone with her uh, on this trip. So just a bunch of questions I already have uh, very early into looking into this case. I'm also just curious, um, it's very hard to tell from this footage, but uh, if she was planning on buying something at the Goodwill, why wasn't her purse actually with her? I mean, I guess it's possible she just took a pocketbook or maybe had some cash in her pocket, something along those lines, but um, you know, when I was living in Southern California, I typically wouldn't leave something as important as my wallet in the car anyway, regardless of if I needed it or not. It's just uh, not a very safe thing to do if you leave valuables in your vehicle in, in Southern California. It's just kind of the way that uh, I was taught for some reason. So I, I don't know. I don't know why she doesn't have her purse with her. Um, there is also another video of them walking through the Goodwill, looking around. And something that a web sleuther noted, and I have to really echo because it's really bothered me um, since they made the note and I went and looked at it for myself. The footage of the two sisters walking through the store does not seem like they're actually shopping. Um, they seem to be walking kind of rapidly. They're kind of glancing a little bit to the left and the right, but they're really not touching anything. It's not like they're going for specific aisles. At one point, I believe you even see them walking around like the furniture section and all that, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me if you're looking for clothing for an 80s party. So I, I just I have this very strange feeling about the footage, uh, about what their intent might have been to go to this Goodwill in the first place. And 
Is it possible that her sister might know more about what their intent was in going to that Goodwill and just hasn't been honest about it? Maybe she feels somewhat responsible for what happened to her sister because she let her go outside alone to possibly meet up with this person. And despite the family speaking up kind of early in the news cycles around this, there's really not a ton of very strong detail that we get from them. We just basically get this kind of light overview of a story. And um, unfortunately, with where reporters are nowadays, no one seemed to ask any really important driving questions. Like, for example, no one just simply asked, well, did she have her purse with her when you came into the store? I, I can't find an answer to that. So really, really tough. And then we throw this other consideration. If we head over to mercurynews.com, three days before Maricela Garcia vanished, she told her younger sister, Sarah, that she was guarding a secret. But instead of revealing it, the 26-year-old Tarzana woman only cried, embracing her sister, and then slept next to her in their home for the next few days, her sister said. Surveillance video shows her leaving the store at 7.22 p.m. She never returned. Her locked car, a tan BMW, was found at the neighboring 99-cent store with her purse inside, Sarah Garcia said. And I get a little trigger there off of the BMW. Um, I don't know what model it is, I don't know how old it is, but it seems like a 26-year-old driving a BMW. She apparently had worked as a, I believe, a grocery delivery person. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of parts of this story that just don't feel right, um, kind of at face value. But of course, I've looked into things before and sometimes things are just what they appear. Uh, however, just once again, I'm just getting a little strange twinge off of this story. Another bit of an interesting twist here. Uh, Maricela had turned off her cell phone while at the Goodwill, her sister Sarah said, because she couldn't get the music playing on it to stop. Now, in the video that shows the full footage of them walking around the store, I believe her sister is actually um, speaking in the background while reviewing that footage. And she is saying that she didn't actually turn off her cell phone. She just shut off the music to her cell phone. What I'm wondering here is, um, was it truly music like a music app or some type of streaming music that was playing or did she have a song set as a ringtone and someone kept calling and that ringtone kept firing up over and over and over logically to me that would make more sense for her having a problem with stopping the music because she would essentially hit that call to go to voicemail and if the person called back right away the music would start up again um, so i really have some big questions about was this truly uh, a cell phone call versus a music service of some kind that was playing on her phone. Uh, Sarah went out to her sister's vehicle and waited for her. Sarah says that she thinks she was out there for 30 or 40 minutes. She kind of lost track of time as she was getting worried. Then she started walking around the neighborhood looking for her and there was a nearby church. Um, during Sarah Garcia's search, she entered the chapel of St. Catherine of Siena Catholic Church Two women there told her they saw a woman in the church matching Maricela's description about a half hour prior. They said she, quote, stormed out looking upset or worried. Now, if we consider a situation where she was possibly being followed by someone, um, I guess she could appear to be worried in that case, but she's starting in a shopping center uh, at 7.22 at night. I'm assuming that many of those businesses are active. I think there's a 99 cent store. I think there's also a supermarket in there. So if she was being followed by someone that made her uncomfortable, it probably would have made sense that she would have gone into an active business and maybe asked someone for help. Um, her getting to a church, once again, if she is still trying to get away from someone that's following her, um, there are people there. Shouldn't she go and ask them possibly for help, maybe to call a police officer or something along those lines? If we consider the other potential story here that she was trying to meet up with someone, is it possible the person said, um, hey, I'll meet you out in the parking lot. She goes out in the parking lot, the person's not there. Uh, no, I mean over at the church. She goes to the church, the person isn't in the church. Um, as we'll see later, it seems like she then walks to the parking lot behind the church. She then goes to the parking lot behind the stores that she was at. Um, 
if you consider the path that it looks like she took, there is a lot of it that has to do with parking lots. I just, I really have this feeling that she was meeting up with someone. That doesn't mean it was over anything illegal. Maybe this is a previous boyfriend or someone that she's not proud is back in her life and she was having trouble telling her sister about it. There's all kinds of different things that could be going on here. Um, but it does feel like she's, to me, she's either moving away from someone or she's trying to meet up with someone. In either case, this doesn't feel like this is a dash, like she is trying to get out of her life. Um, why is she going to go into a church? Is she having second thoughts or something like that where her sister could possibly find her relatively soon? Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Of course, why she doesn't take her purse makes almost no sense to me. Why she leaves her car behind doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, so just looking at this from very limited information, I have to say um, I don't feel like this is her running away on her own accord. Seems like something else is going on here. I'm just not sure if someone's following her or if she is willingly going to meet up with someone and then something wrong happens or something bad happens at that point. Now, according to this article, uh, before going to Goodwill, the Garcia sisters were in Venice Beach where Maricela made two deliveries for her job with the on-demand delivery service Postmates, her sister said. Now, I'm not terribly familiar with Postmates, but just at a quick uh, Google search and glance here, uh, it looks like it is kind of being compared to Uber in that it is an application where you can sign up and you can become essentially a delivery person. And I don't think it is limited to, limited to groceries as uh, I originally thought. It looks like they also do uh, food deliveries and things of that nature. Um, the only thing that I find kind of interesting about this aspect of the story is um, I sincerely doubt that you are doing a simple local type delivery, picking up groceries or food for someone. Uh, you're certainly not going to be getting food from Reseda and driving it to Venice Beach. I can guarantee you by the time it got there, first of all, it would be an hour to an hour and a half. The food would be ridiculously cold. It just, it's not, it's not practical. Um, once again, I have to wonder here, is Sarah's view of this story being misinterpreted because she's taking her sister's word at face value? Is there something else going on here? Was there something else being delivered in Venice Beach? Was something possibly being picked up from Venice Beach? And now she was looking to hand this thing off to someone else in the Reseda area, something along those lines. That distance um, for people that aren't familiar with California, that can be a serious distance, particularly on a weeknight. Um, the freeways that you have to take to get there are ridiculously jam-packed. We just talked about traffic this week on Johnny Vlogs. Uh, you don't do that drive just for a simple delivery service. Doesn't make any logical sense to me. Especially when the point of this is to uh, crowdsource to essentially find local delivery drivers. Jumping to another article at Mercury News, uh, missing Los Angeles woman's choker found, quote, ripped off her neck, her mother says, quote, that choker in your evidence room, that was her favorite thing to wear. I swear she would sleep and shower in it if she could, wrote the mother who lives with her daughters in Tarzana. If you look at it now, it's obvious from the way it looked to have been ripped off her neck that she will never wear it again. It's all torn and tattered. I cannot allow myself to think of how it came to be that way. Real quick, we're gonna jump over to a map that was made by a Web Sleuths user. Um, here they show several key locations. Uh, if we look here towards the left, this is the Goodwill store where this whole thing started. This yellow route, um, they actually brought out a search and rescue canine that um, took a scent of something that belonged to Maricela. And then this is the path that the canine took. So it's strongly believed this is the path that she walked in all of this. Um, so we can see immediately she did cut out to the left from the camera we saw from inside the store. So this seems to make sense. Um, she's heading past a 99 cent store. It looks like she possibly steps into a John's Marketplace. Um, she then cuts out across the parking lot. And this is the church that I mentioned. Here, the dog sat at one place, which um, tells the owner of the dog that she likely waited there for some period of time. So that's what this marker is with the three squares in it. 
She then leaves the church, um, heads back up around to the back of the shopping center. And what's noted back here are two things. First of all, that second cell phone that I told you about that was supposed to be primarily used as an internet device is found broken over here. And it is said that the battery has been removed and there is no SIM card. If it was only an internet device that she would use while on Wi-Fi, it probably wouldn't need a SIM card. So I'm not sure if the SIM card missing is all that important or not. But like I said, I'm not even sure if this story is true that this is essentially a internet device that has no uh, phone service to it. Um, outside of that, on her walking path, they did find a cigarette butt that matched the brand that she smokes. It is a little bit of a less popular brand. It's called American Spirits. Um, as a former smoker, I can tell you, I actually smoked them for a little while, but it's not as popular as like a Camel or Marlboro or something like that. So they did find a cigarette butt that matched her brand back here, but it hasn't been tested. So it's very hard for me to conclude if that has really anything to do with her at all. Um, but from this parking lot, once again, look at the shape that we have going on in here. She kind of winds in, through this parking lot, cuts all the way across it, then cuts back up through the parking lot. Um, it seems like she crosses the street into another parking lot, once again behind the church, and then up onto Lindley, down Lindley, and this is a Kaiser building, which it looks like, once again, she stops at the front of this Kaiser building. And what's interesting about this is they actually have cameras at that building. However, we have no idea, are police uh, asking them for that footage? Has the family even gone to the location to ask for that footage? I can't tell you because there's just so little information on this case. But apparently she did stop there. And once again, here we go through another large parking lot. And down in this lower right-hand corner, we see once again she stopped in this area, supposedly. This is where a dumpster for the medical building was, and this is where they supposedly found her choker. Uh, it's interesting because you have a dog following her scent, and I believe the dog actually hit on the choker. Um, I believe. I'm not 100% positive, and there is some chance that this might not be her choker. It could be a piece of fabric. They're saying that the way that it was kind of shredded and ripped, um, they're not certain 100% that it is her choker. If we jump over to a more recent picture of her, I believe this is the choker in this photo here, and there's no mention of this heart um, being found. So what we're talking about is literally a strap of black fabric that could come from many other things. Um, also, I just wanted to point out when I saw this picture, she doesn't look particularly healthy in this picture to me, and I got this picture from a place that said this is a more recent photo of her. If we look even at this picture that was used for this um, poster, she has a bit more weight on her face, a kind of a glow. She looks quite a bit healthier. Um, this picture doesn't strike me as someone that's very healthy. Uh, it could be that she's dealing with depression of some kind. Maybe she's not eating well. Uh, maybe something else, but I just wanted to point that out. Another note about the dumpsters, um, when her family found that, uh, of course they immediately called police to handle the potential choker as evidence, but they did mention that the dumpsters looked like they had been emptied recently and the one, one of them had, was about a quarter full and had a bunch of medical waste in it, so obviously they didn't go digging through that, but the other dumpster was completely empty. So. I do think it is worth mentioning there is some possibility that if something really bad happened, maybe she was put into the dumpster. It could be that the dumpster got emptied and someone didn't notice that she was actually in there. Back to the article at Mercury News, uh, Lori Wells, uh, which I believe is her married name, I think she also goes by Lori Hall or Lori Hall Wells. Uh, she's a canine handler and president of the nonprofit organization Search Dogs 24-7. She searched the area Saturday with her Catahoula leopard dog, Katrina. Katrina is a scent-specific trailing dog, which means when she's handed an article of clothing that belongs to a missing person, she can pick up that scent through crowds, parking lots, and even wilderness, Wells said. And that is where this yellow trace comes into play. This is the path that Katrina the dog uh, basically detected that scent. 
pretty strange, but uh, when researching this case, I really had to lean on web sleuths quite a bit because uh, there is so little official media out there, especially currently. Um, if you're going to find anything current about this story, it's probably going to be in this latest thread. So, of course, I will include a link to that down below. And this was also covered on Crime Stories with Nancy Grace, which is a podcast. Um, I just have to say the podcast seems to kind of get off track a little bit when Nancy wants to attack her co-host. I've noticed this a few times with this podcast before. Um, Nancy just doesn't want to seem to consider that maybe this has something to do with a drug deal of some kind or that this girl might be suffering with some type of addiction. Uh, her family has pretty much openly commented that that was the case. I saw one other place where they said that she struggled with drug use for about five years and that was information that came from her family. So I don't know why Nancy wants to deny all that so strongly, but um, I think to consider it is certainly uh, not going to be a disservice to this case. Something motivated her to step outside. Uh, I believe she was lying to her sister because obviously her cigarettes are found in her car. Um, outside of that, yes, it's possible she had a, a separate pack on her. Um, but something motivated her to go out and to search. It looks like to me, particularly from the path the dog took, um, she's searching parking lots for someone. And in my mind, that could be that she's meeting up with someone, maybe to deliver something, maybe to pick up something. I have no idea. Also down below, I am going to include a link to a GoFundMe campaign for Lori Hall. Um, her and her husband have been basically doing this for free, and they dispatch themselves as quickly as possible to these scenes, try to help people by bringing their trained animals. Um, a very, very amazing service in my mind, and if you would consider supporting them, uh, I will have a link down below. This particular campaign is to help them pay for a vehicle. They mention in here that they have driven their vehicles uh, over 500,000 miles combined, and they wound up having to buy a new vehicle to transport their volunteer dogs out, and they're hoping that donations might help them pay down some of that principal. So there's a link for that down below also. This is where I hand it over to you, Brain Scratchers. Please use the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on this case. Of course, in the description box, I will have contact information for the LAPD, as well as a particular detective that is working this case and a place where you can submit tips anonymously. I also have all the links to everything we've covered here. I'll also include the videos of her at the Goodwill. Maybe you guys see something in there that I don't. Um, so please check those out. Thank you so much for joining me here on Searchlight. I hope you are having a nice week. Take care, and I'll see you on the next show on the Lord Arts channel.